Yeah, but like, what do people say on CB radio and stuff? Candy cane! What's up guys, Eric McGray here from Various Engineering here today to show you how to take one of these and make it into that. Yeah guys, why don't you follow us in here into the uh, presidential office where we do all our fancy pants work and I'll show you how to program some stuff. All right, so here we are in front of the workstation in the office uh, where we've got NX in front of us here on the screen and I have the um, finished design and Basically what I'll do with this is to create a program, uh, I'll decide how I want to machine it, and then I'll create a program file, which I just switched to now, you can see. I'm trying to do it in a way so one complete cycle is netting us a finished part. So we'll have the first operation done on the left side vise, and then the second operation done on the right side vise. You can see we're starting out with our blank geometry, I've got it around the first part here. Um, we'll machine all the features that we can, or all the ones that make sense over here. Then we're going to go ahead and flip it over, grab it with some soft jaws, and then you can see the soft jaws are marked here for the part number, so we know it, which, uh, which part these soft jaws are for. And then we'll go ahead and uh, do the cutting operations to finish off that part. And then once that cycle is complete, like I said, this part comes out, this part moves over here, and a uh, new blank comes in on this side. Yeah, this is this is basically a setup. This is, uh, you can see all the geometry that I use here. And then over on my other display, I've got, this is a finished program. So you can see the list of all these tool paths that make up the program, which completes the part. Um, if I go ahead and let's say display, on my, oh my God, look at this guy. So I'll just, to make, it, to make it easy, I'll just display this over here, so that way we don't have to keep switching screens. Um, yeah, we've got our first roughing operation here, the adaptive milling, and then it goes ahead, and without doing a tool change, it'll just jump right to the second one to save some time. Um, and then we just continue cycling through. You can see all the different operations. So, and then if I go ahead and click that, you can see the tool positioned right above the part there that's going to do that, All right? And then same here, we've got those slots being cut. And you can see it just works its way back and forth, switching tools as it needs to, All right? And then that completes a part. Um, one cool thing about this is I can actually see the, the part on the computer, like after cutting, before cutting anything. So I can identify areas that I might have missed or something that I cut that I shouldn't have, something like that. So let's go ahead in our geometry view here and I can just show you that real quick. So for example, if I hide um, my parts and let's hide the material as well. And then we can go back and I should probably hide some of these faces here. Okay, and then we can go back here. So if I just wanted to show you what the workpiece looks like, so then we can take a look and you can see it's cutting away. So yeah, that is the first operation part. And it's nice, you can zoom in, you can see what it's gonna look like. Um, again, this the resolution of this is basically an STL file. It's not fantastic. I could go ahead and enhance the resolution if I want to make sure, because these are not faceted. This would be like just a smooth arc. But yeah, so that's basically um, how I can verify parts before we actually make them on the machine, uh, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that about sums it up for this. Um, there's kind of a lot to programming stuff. This, these are some really simple parts, so there's not a whole lot to this. But if we just open up this operation here, all right, so as you can see here, there are just a bunch of parameters that you can change to 
get things just the way you like them. So, and that's true for pretty much every operation. Most of the time I have templates set up with some pretty good defaults based on the standard tools and the materials that we use. Um, but yeah. All right, well, that's basically programming part, kinda. So now you get to see a little bit of that and uh, that's about all for these pedal spacers. So yeah, over here we're making some pedal spacers today. Uh, we got the UMC 750 SS by Haas here. Not really using much of the five axis on these parts, but what we do have going on is we're making first stop in the left side vise, and then we flip that guy over to do the second op over here. So that way every cycle we're getting a finished part coming out. There's your part number right there. So super simple operation. Figure I'll just show you what we got going on. I'll loosen that boy. Loosen that guy over there. Clear that out real quick. And we got our finished parts just getting stacked up over here. Make sure we get those soft jaws nice and clear, no chips in there, right? Tighten that guy. And then we take a piece of raw stock here. Guy goes in. Make sure we have the correct distance set here. So that way we don't go breaking any more tools. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. <laughs> the stock was too big. Yeah, yeah. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. Blame it on man button. Not here, so that's easy. Yep. That's exactly why. Torque them both down. We're ready to start the next cycle. Easy peasy. Well, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate your time. Uh, we really enjoy what we do here. I get a lot of satisfaction from making things, going from design to programming, to making stuff, to getting it on the car and finding out how you like it. So go ahead and tell us in the comments below. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you later on the social media. Peace.